Why, hello again. Old Buster coming back to you with another story. Now, again, this is one of the stories that I just uh, recorded with the radio feller of ours, old Larry Simpson down there in Midlothian, Texas. And uh, everybody felt like they'd rather have me make a video of them. Well, that's what we're doing. This is Brick Bats. Well, Buster was a sci-fi down the back way on Old Central Road when he rounded Elderberry Corner and spied Walter and Big Mike down in a hole. Well, that just wasn't going to do less than he found out what all was going on there. Well, Buster hollered down to Walter, Walter and asked him what he would have done down in that there hole. Well, says Walter, I've been a trying to siphon some gas for this here pump to pump some water in this here hole. Buster said, what in the world you got Big Mike into in that hole with you? Big Mike popped up and says that he was just a passing by. And Walter hollered for him to help him get that guy siphoned off to get that pump to work and to pump the water in the hole. Now, you know that Walter don't know much about machinery. And also, I crawled down in there to help him get that dang pump to work. I about got her ready to go now. Now hold on a minute now, feller, says Buster. Walter, why in the world do you want to pump water out of Indian bio into that hole? Well, says Walter, Jesse Dunn told me to get to pumping water in the hole so as for the funny hole and pole boys could have began to mashing up mud with their toes and also we could make some bricks. Well, them brick bats, you know. Well, have y'all gone plumb nuts, says Buster. What is a ferny hole and pole boys going to squish mud up betwixt their toes for to make brickbats for? Well, says Walter, Jesse told me to get her done because he's going to mix in some of his pheromones in the brickbats and sell them. Well, he ain't told me nothing about all this, but I reckon he got some kind of idea because he wouldn't be telling you less than he was going to make us some money. Big Mike, if you're through making mud pies, let's all <laughs> go on over to see Jesse and see what all he's got on his mind about them brickbats. Well, Walter said, now wait up. Let me get the Fernie home po' boys to work it. Jesse says he's a paying them a dollar a day for squishing the mud up for the brickbats. Well, the three of them let on out to find Jesse and get the skinny on the brickbats. They found him a ciphering in the barn, a pencil scratching and all. Well, Buster says to Jesse that he seed about the darndest thing in a month of Sundays and wanted to know what all he had up his sleeve. Well, let me get hired. He's out back making me some molds, and I sure am glad Big Mike is here because I need him to lend a hand being as he is smart as a weapon all. Well, hired come in about that there time, and Jesse says he had him a notion of what they call an epiphany. An epiphany. Hmm. What, asked Buster? Well, a heck of a good idea, says Jesse. Y'all know about them pheromones of mine and all the gals and Witter Jessup are chasing after me. So I figured if they worked that good, I would mix up some in the brick bats and all the women folk would get their men folk to buy them. Acme Brick Company had just about cornered the market on building bricks and are making a fortune, he said. The old brick company outside of England, that's, you know, pronounced England, not no England, that's over across the pond. Down there in England, done went bust cause of Acme and I made a deal for their business lock, stock, and barrel. Big Mike, I would dearly love for you to come on in this with us and I can sure enough make us a pile of greenbacks, says Jesse. The gumbo we got here is just right for making brickbacks. The topsoil we take off will fetch a premium too. We is going to ship brickbacks all over the country and the women folk will sell them for us. They is going to have their men folk buying brick bats to build every witch a thing, let alone what is already called for in construction around the country. That there low ground our folks has has got on their places is ideal for making them their brick bats. That ground ain't worth much to them anyhow, and now it'll make them a fortune. Well, them ferny ho and po' boys ain't going to squish enough mud <laughs> twixt their toes to make too many brick bats in that candy, Jesse. No, for sure, but we is a... <laughs> Going to go big time with the old brick plant and Big Mike's help. He'll probably have to get his and Paul and brother to help out too, but it'd be well worth their while. I got all the transportation worked out and distribution too. I figure after we take over the market, 
Acme or some other big company will want to buy us out, lock, stock, and barrel. With the kind of money we can see on this deal, it will set all of us up for life. We are talking eight plus billion dollars a year for a brick batch, and we got a lock on it. That's a lot of money. I don't know how to count that many zeros, says uh, Walter. And Howard said, well, he wouldn't mind trying. I put together some information for you boys so y'all can get your mind around the ID. Well, I guess he done done his studying on it now. And he had all that information what was going on around the United States of America and in even other some parts of the world about them brickbacks. Y'all just take a gander at this and y'all see what I'm talking about. And he, of course, he give all the boys all that information. And to let you folks know all that stuff about them brickbacks and pictures and whatnot is in the written story too, but I can't show them on this video. Well, boys, what you thinking, Buster said. Jesse, there ain't a one of us don't go along with what you all is planning. You can count us all in. Wasn't no need even asking us. The speed of trust, you know. Well, Hired asked the boys if they heard hiding a hair of Goober. Well, not in their words in his and tumble down the mountain, says Big Mike. Now, what's this about... <laughs> Goober asked Walter, Well, you've been too dang busy with that there darn pump and mud pies to know what all done happened, says Buster. I was coming out of Swain's Hardware getting some dynamite to blow some beaver down when I seen Goober riding down the road. Seems Big Mike done took pity on old Goober and loaned the boy some of his and tools. Well, Goober had done been to Hired's <laughs> place and fixing up his contraption. Of course, he knowed about Hire's invention and figured Hire could help him some with his and contraption. Well, Goober got his himself a wood wheel bicycle and figured on making that bicycle into a contraption to ride two fellers on the back. Well, you know, the bicycle wasn't made for nothing like that, but Goober was dade say on it anyhow. <laughs> he told me, says Buster, that he was Uber Goober. Now, I says to Goober, you ain't no Uber Goober. You is Goober Uber from over to the other side of the mountain from Big Mike. He said, no, I'm Uber Goober, and I'm going to give rides for a nickel on my wood wheel bicycle. I can go to the picture show for a nickel, or I can get me a moon pie and an RC for a nickel over at the Hiram Neal's tire shop. Well, Buster told the boys, he told Goober, ain't nobody going to pay you no nickel for a ride on your contraption. Well, I reckon they will, says Goober, cause I'm Uber Goober. I said, no, you ain't. You're sure enough a Goober Uber from the Uber Bunch on the other side of the mountain. I'm going to the Knights on Saturday night, and them boys getting liquored up will be glad to give me a nickel for a ride back to the house. Well, poor old Goober didn't get no takers at all Saturday night. His and contraption was plumb pitiful, he said. Well, hired piped up and said that was a fact. Wondered even wrote. Well, to make a long story short, Goober got the Fritch boy down at Tar Bottoms to give him a bright, shiny copper penny for a ride. <laughs> well, Big Mike and his and Pa and Grandpa was up to their Fellspar mine on the side of the mountain when they heard all manner of caterwauling. Seems Goober done hit a pothole on that old logging road and run up again a big old blue rock and busted his and wood wheels on his and bicycle. Well, the contraption come a-flying apart and slung the Fritch boy amongst the gravel where he got scunned up a mite, but Goober went over to the side of the mountain, bicycle, contraption, wood wheels, and all. Well, Big Mike and his and Paul see Goober tumbling down the mountainside just a-hollering for help. When they got to Goober, his and leg and arm was busted and his and hay bunged up pretty bad, too. Well, Big Mike and his and Paul got Goober to the hospital where Doc Harris patched him up. I seen him come into town, so I went over to the hospital, says Buster. Old Goober was a sight, I tell you. Well, I asked Goober if he had reckoned he'd <laughs> make it, and he said he would be laid up a spell. But sure enough, wasn't no Uber Goober no more, just plain old Goober Uber. <laughs> that boy. Well, Goober, I said, I told you that there contraption of yourn would get you up to no good, didn't I? You sure did, Buster, says Goober. But I was just trying to make a nickel. Well, when Goober got up and about again, and he come to see me or Jesse, and we would see if and we could help him on out earn his nickel, what Buster told him. Come to think about it, it fit right in with the Fernie Ho and Po boys squishing mud up twixt their toes. 
Well, you know, <laughs> them pole boys, they had them webbed feet. That really made something good, squishing them up. But that wasn't enough to make enough bricks that they wanted to make. And then Goober had big old feet, so that was really going to help, too. Well, all the boys sure enough laughed on that, I tell you. They sure didn't know no Uber Goober, just a plain old Goober Uber from back on the side of the mountain. Now, the rest of the story is that the boys done got Goober one of them bicycles that you recline on and pedal. And uh, they had a card in there with it. And they give Goober a hundred dollars in there. That's five gold eagles. So he wouldn't be doing worrying about his nickel and his contraption. But they put Goober to work with him, you see. The boys invested Goober's earnings, and it was about he was born near about fifty year old when he come to find out he owned uh, he owned the oldest and largest bicycle plant in the United States of America. Old Goober had a smile on his face that uh, you'd never wash off. Well, y'all have a blessed day. A blessed day. This is Old Buster signing out. I hope everybody has a happy holiday season, as they say. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.